drums of Fiji sound in welcome to the Queen from across the seas. To the great white ship sail chieftains in heartfelt thanks for 80 years of royal protection. Never before has a reigning British monarch visited these isles. Today, Silver exults in the spirit of empire. <laughs> And now, the great moment. Escorted by Sir Ronald Garvey, the governor, and attended by Lady Pamela Mountbatten and the Duke's equerry, the Queen and her husband enter for the first time into the personal lives of their Pacific Island subjects. <laughs> The lovable dignity of four-year-old Andy May brings a first radiant smile from the Queen. In Fiji, as elsewhere, it is a smile which will be long remembered. So to the more formal ceremonies, with first a greeting for Captain Peter Brandt of New Zealand. Under his command as Captain of the Guard are men of a type which is serving the Commonwealth splendidly in the Malayan campaign. The Civic by the Mayor and Mayoress ushers in a day which is predominantly a day of the people. A great tarpa carpet has been laid in the Queen's honour in Albert Park, where Kingsford Smith landed in 1928. Here she will witness traditional ceremonies steeped in all the richness of Fijian history. Escorting her now is Sir Lala Sakuna, Secretary for Fijian Affairs. Ladies of high rank enact a ritual welcome before the replica of a canoe. It is an invocation in the name of peace and goodwill, like the whale tooth ceremony now performed by high-ranking chiefs. According to custom, the queen hands the whale's tooth into the care of the Matani Vanua, And now, the most impressive of the many ritual acts which bring pageantry to this day. It is the start of the Yangona, or carver ceremony. From the powdered roots of the Yangona tree, an infusion is to be made. When ready, the drink will be offered to Her Majesty. The hereditary chiefs of Bao are responsible for the mixing. <laughs> the significance of the moment as the cupbearer solemnly approaches. By drinking kava, she pays Fiji its greatest honour. <laughs> Formalities are relaxed as the Queen receives gifts. Among them, a beautiful casket from the Fijian girl guides. As for the tribesmen, they entertain Her Majesty with spear dance and song.
Queen is now on her way to open a new medical school. The Central Medical School at Tamavua, beneath its roof will be trained doctors who will serve in remote islands and under many flags. Humanity is its guiding star. Students of every race and nation in the Pacific attend this school. This will be a never forgotten moment. A royal key, and to more than a school, a monument to a colony's progress. And now, a school of another sort. Named after the Fijian king who in 1874 ceded Fiji to Britain, the Andy Thackambao School is Fiji's first secondary school for girls. Its principal, Miss Charlton, comes from Auckland. What charms the Queen is its blending of ancient culture with modern ways. This action song, for instance. Their natural grace is unmistakable. They cup their hands in the Fijian saloon. When they arrive at the school, many of the girls can speak little English, but some are now ready for the New Zealand school certificate. Fijian boys from the Queen Victoria College now take the field and provide Her Majesty and the Duke with a delightful study in contrast as they warm to a traditional club dance. <laughs> What the boy spokesman tells the Queen is not placed on record. That they have impressed and pleased the royal couple, that is enough. Soon night will bring enchantment to the royal tour. A bodyguard of 240 torchbearers escorts the Queen and the Duke to a state ball, where a thousand guests will dance through the starlit hours. though the royal couple must be after their strenuous day, they delight the waiting crowds with a personal touch which endears the crown to the people. Side by side, man and wife, in all their happiness. In Winston Churchill's words, we honor her as queen but we love her because she is herself. In the chamber of the Legislative Council next morning, the Queen hears the colony's address of welcome. It is read by Sir Lala Sukuna. With affection and with our humble royalty and duty to the third and first of your Majesty, we the people of Fiji today welcome your Majesty and His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, 
to this corner. Apart from the great pleasure which your majesty's visit gives to us all today, it will still further strengthen the bonds of affection and loyalty which bind us to the throne and person of your majesty. In accordance with etiquette, Sir Lala and to the Queen. It is a duty performed with distinction by a man who ranks high among statesmen of all races in the Pacific. I send a special word of greeting to the Mid First Battalion CG Infantry Regiment in Malaya. And I should like them to know that though they are far away from home today, they are not forgotten. It gives me great pleasure to learn of the way in which the different racial communities in Fiji have succeeded in living and working together in harmony. This has given the colony prosperity and the political stability that might well be envied by many larger territories. And now the Queen's first investiture in her colony of Fiji. A 75-mile journey by flying boat has enabled the Queen to visit Lao Toka, where another heartwarming presentation takes place. On this occasion, it is by a little Indian girl, and she makes her shy bow on behalf of the 149,000 Indian settlers in Fiji. The welcome by Mr. J.A. Adams, the mayor, is followed by an inspection of the less usual sort. For Lao Toka's guard of honor is composed of 100 European and Fijian veterans of the Malayan and Solomon campaigns. Without further pause, the Queen is on her way to other engagements. The time to end her brief visit to Fiji is fast approaching. At the flying boat base in Lothala Bay, the Queen boards Aotearoa II for Tonga. With her goes deep understanding of a brave island race. Behind her she leaves memories which are inspiring. miles southeast of Suva, the flags go up over the kingdom of Tonga. Many of the decorations in Nuku'alofa, the capital, have been built to the personal design of a woman well loved in Britain. It is to meet the people of Queen Saloti that Her Majesty has come from Fiji. The meeting of the queens is the meeting of friends. Queen Saloti's bearing at the coronation will never be forgotten. Crown Prince Tungi is presented and watched by carefree and rejoicing crowds the Queen of England is invited to inspect the Tongan Royal Guard. <laughs> At the end of the drive lies feasting and dancing. Queen Saloti has planned much for her guests. Tapa carpet is prelude to an afternoon's entertainment so varied that only a kaleidoscopic impression can remain in the memory. But few will forget the friendly walk across the Malai to the feast house, where at low tables, each 30 feet long, Queen Saloti and her guests will sit Tongan style, cross legged on cushions. <laughs> In company with the royal party, a thousand guests eat of this feast. 
It is the full fruit of Tongan husbandry. <laughs> Kaleidoscopic impressions, that is all they can be. And of them, the spear dance is outstanding. Tungi escorts the queen as she leaves for the palace. Tomorrow is Sunday and she will be awakened early by the soft music of Tongan nose flutes. The Wesleyan Church, in which the Queen has worshipped, can shelter a congregation of 2,000, an amazing achievement in view of the fact that Christian missionaries were unknown in Tonga until 1828. The Reverend A. E. Mackay, an Australian, Queen Godspeed. The singing she and the Duke have heard told her all she needs to know about the conscientiousness of his work. were the Tongas named the Friendly Isles when first explored by Captain Cook. The hour of farewell has come all too soon. <laughs> Tungi, Crown Print Premier. The thoughts of all Tonga go with the Queen and the Duke on their voyage to New Zealand. <laughs>